speaking of joining us, don't forget, follow us on Twitter. We're, we're trying to get 10,000. We're halfway there. we got 5,000 followers. It's easy. It's at Talking Boxing. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G. We'd appreciate it if you follow us on Twitter. And while you're at it, join our Facebook groups, uh, Talking Boxing with Billy C. There's another one under, under my name, Bill Calagero, Billy Calagero. So uh, follow, one of our, uh, follow us on Twitter and join one of our Facebook groups. Now, if you're not doing anything this weekend, don't forget JKJ Boxing has a great card uh, with local talent up in Syracuse, New York. Uh, so get on the sled. Bundle up and uh, go up to uh, the Holiday Inn in Syracuse. You can get tickets still starting at 20 bucks a piece. www.jkjboxing.com. Make sure you tell them Billy C sent you. Okay, uh, our uh, boxing on TV ratings. Now, I want to thank everybody that's uh, been uh, sending me some kudos on that. We are still looking for uh, some people that want to get involved with our rating system. Uh, we're doing pretty good. I, I know that um, it's... Uh, um, it, it's it's not as easy as it seems uh, because, you know, you want to be as fair as you can. So um, I'm going to give you the ratings for uh, this week. We actually have uh, three cards that were on TV. Uh, we'll start off with the first one. Now, you could check out these ratings. It's not updated on the site right now, but it will if you watch this on a replay. Uh, it will be updated tomorrow uh, on www.billycboxing.com along with the Billy C. Fight Challenge. So if you're involved with that, uh, the current rankings uh, will be updated tomorrow. Uh, okay, the first one we're going to talk about is uh, the ESPN broadcast. Now, it happens to be their sixth broadcast of the year so far. The uh, network with the most uh, boxing events so far is ESPN. Uh, took place uh, on Friday night. Uh, the 20th, and it was the Boxino tournament. Now, as far as the quality in a main event, now with the tournament, it's tough uh, because it's not technically a main event. Uh, so I, I gave it a satisfactory, a three. I love the Boxino tournaments, no doubt, okay? And to be honest, these fights were good for heavyweight fights, more action-packed than what we've been accustomed to seeing for, for heavyweights at this level. Uh, when they're matched well, and and I, and, you know, Eric Botch is the matchmaker for this thing, and uh, he does a fantastic job. I mean, um, there's no question about it. Um, but I felt that these fights were all predictable fights. I felt that every single one of these fights, you kind of knew who was going to win. That is a little different than all of the other tournaments so far that we've seen in this Boxino thing. And that's why I gave him a satisfactory. Now, I have to, because it's a tournament, I'm carrying that over to the co-main, uh, to the uh, uh, undercard as well. So I'm giving the main event and the undercard, since it's the tournament, both of them satisfactory grades. That's a three, okay? Then we go to uh, the third criteria is the quality of the crowd uh, and as well as the, uh, uh, you know, with the amount of people in the crowd and the excitement. That I scored a very good. I happened to have been ringside. I then watched the broadcast when uh, I came home. But uh, once again, the Boxino Tournament at the Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, New York, uh, proved to be uh, an exciting event for the fans. It was uh, packed, and the crowd was very into this. Uh, I scored a four, which is very good. Uh, as far as the uh, officials' performance, um, I, I, listen, I, I give it a, a two. I, I give the score uh, a, a two, an unsatisfactory. Now, two of the three uh, referees, and I'll mention their names, uh, their first names, uh, you know, uh, my man Dick, uh, and then also, uh, um, what's his name, uh, uh, my, 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 the guy that I think uh, uh, does a, a great one, Charlie, okay? So Charlie and Dick, I thought, did a, a great job uh, with their refereeing. I'm not going to say last names because I don't want to play favorites or anything, and, and I would say if they didn't, but I believe that those two guys did a, a good job. But the third referee, Mark, and the judges, not so much. Not so much. Uh, some of the scores were really questionable, in my opinion. Now, I had, you know, I sat literally right behind Teddy Atlas. My view was perfect. Um, I, you know, some of these so-called ties and going into the tiebreaker, I, I'm not so sure I agree with, uh, you know, the Lenroy Thomas fight. Yes, I do agree with that one. Uh, but, uh, but not the other one. I, so I scored it an unsatisfactory. I, I wasn't happy, but one of the things that really, 
Now, remember, the officials aren't just the referees and the judges. It's also people like the ringside doctor. And I think that one of the ringside doctors really went, made me score, even despite some questionable scores and some questionable refereeing by one referee named Mark. Um, I, you know, I, I witnessed something from a ringside doctor. Now, you probably wouldn't have witnessed this on TV, but it ca- I'm sorry, it carried my score and it went from satisfactory to unsatisfactory. Um, a ringside doctor who's supposed to, um, you know, observe and, and check out a fighter who's been knocked uh, down and out. The fight was stopped. Nate Heaven was out and the ringside doctor climbs in. Next thing you know, you see Nate Heaven running around the ring, outside the ring. He's running around the ring outside and the doctor couldn't find him. Where, where, where'd he go? How do you miss a six foot eight gigantic heavyweight and the guy is just freely walking around the arena. I, I thought it was terrible. You know, these doctors are, are supposed to they're supposed to sit him on a stool. And if, if the fighter's not listening, I mean, you, you got other guys around. I, I scored the, the officiating uh, overall official's performance uh, a two, unsatisfactory. Now, as far as the uh, commentator performance, listen, I, like I said, you know, Bernardo, uh, this guy is a life-size plastic Barbie doll. I, 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 he doesn't even look like he's a human being, especially when the camera's on him. I don't know why they keep dragging his ass back on the broadcast. And Todd Grisham, I'm sorry. Normally, my man Alex Papali and I agree on things, but Todd Grisham has no business being allowed inside a boxing ring to watch the fights, let alone a boxing uh, venue to watch fights, let alone behind a camera. This guy is terrible. He doesn't know the difference between a left hook and a fish hook. He, I, I think he's scared that if a fly landed on him too much, it might knock his ass out. I, he's terrible. He's terrible. I mean, I, the, Todd Grisham alone was like putting a pair of cement slippers on a long-distance swimmer, okay? He tried to his hardest to bring this broadcast down, but thankfully, even though I disagree with some of the things Teddy says, thankfully, Teddy Atlas and Joe Tessitor were solid, and as a result of that, despite the piss-poor plastic performance by Bernardo and the just unacceptable uh, performance of Todd uh, Grisham, I score it a three, a satisfactory. Uh, when you add it up, it turns out to be 15, which averages out to an overall score of that broadcast as a satisfactory grade for the sixth ESPN uh, broadcast. Now, showtime. They were doing their third broadcast of the uh, year so far. The main event, I give it a satisfactory grade. It went. It was a fight that went the distance, but it wasn't what I expected from a cable network. You know, everybody was watching the Who Can Mexican uh, to put on a, a really good performance. Um, it seemed that he was matched well to do that, and uh, although it was a dominating performance, it wasn't exciting to me, and uh, it went the distance. Um, this is coming from Showtime. That's a cable network that we expect uh, a higher level of, of main events at least. You know, they used to pride themselves on putting together matches that you just didn't know who was going to win. Everybody knew Sammy, the uh, Who Can Mexican, was going to win that fight. I just thought it would be a little more exciting. Uh, but because um, Larte went the distance and fought, you know, the way he did, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to beat him up any worse than a satisfactory grade. I gave him a three. As far as the undercard goes, again, um, the only reason uh, why uh, I'm giving this a satisfactory is because of the upset. Uh, Baker upsetting Savine. Uh, of course, uh, I thought the rest of it really was terrible matchmaking, um, so I give it a three. As far as the uh, uh, quality of the crowd and the excitement, nothing great, nothing bad, satisfactory, it gets a three. As far as the officiating, nothing great, nothing bad, I give it a three, satisfactory. And as far as the uh, uh, broadcast team, listen, uh, Barry Tompkins and Steve Farhood, uh, are uh, as good as it gets. I think that these two guys are, are arguably the best duo uh, in pro boxing today. But, you know, it, it's tough to, to make uh, what you're watching, uh, which is a terrible card, sound good. You know, uh, so as a result, I scored it a satisfactory. Across the board, satisfactory. Overall, satisfactory. I'm giving them a three for Showtime's third event of the year. And finally, the HBO broadcast, uh, the Triple G fight. Uh, 
Uh, the main event, I scored a four, a very good. Triple G continues to show he's the best middleweight in the sport right now. Um, Murray showed he's a legitimate top five middleweight. I mean, that's the truth. And when you factor in the heart that this guy had, you know, I wish all fighters enter the ring with the same level of heart that Martin Murray did on Saturday night. I scored it a four. As far as the co-main event, although it wasn't televised, if you read it on paper, I have to give it a score because it's not fair to factor in a zero. Um, I give it a satisfactory as a three. Now, as far as the quality of the crowd and excitement from the crowd, listen, you have to give it a very good, a four. Um, you know, the crowd was only 900 people strong, but it sounded like 9,000. These guys were into it, singing and cheering and stomping their feet and the flags and everything else. Uh, I loved it. All right. Um, you know, I love these kinds of events where you have big fights in small venues. In my opinion, those small venues are, you know, where it's at and it lets the fans get into it from start to finish. And as far as watching it on TV, it really makes the viewing experience uh, a lot better. So I, I give it a four. Uh, as far as the officials' performance, Louis Pabone, I, listen, I give it an unsatisfactory. I think he made the right call in the, in the 11th round when he stopped the fight. That I give him a kudos for, for. But he failed to do anything close to doing a good job. He seemed to be confused several times with the 10-second warning bell, something he should have familiarized himself with before the, the, the start of the fight. He, kept, he stopped the fight once when the bell rang. He thought, he thought it was the bell, and then he started, and then he stopped. I, at one point, he was waving at somebody, um, one of the officials, and the two fighters thought he was waving at them because he waved past them. He, he, he did a bad job there, um, and... Uh, uh, he missed several low blows in that fight uh, that Murray landed. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, um, Triple G didn't complain about it once, but, you know, he should have at least given him a warning. Um, I also believe that Triple G was coming in with his head a little bit in the beginning of that fight, and never once uh, did, uh, did Pabone give him a stern warning. He kept saying, watch your head. But, but I thought that it was, at, it was so serious that it, it should have warranted a stern warning uh, and, and, a, and a warning that a point would be taken if he doesn't stop. Um, I, I, saw, I noticed that in the first couple of rounds. So I, I give him a two. Uh, as far as the uh, commentating performance, Jim Lampley and Roy Jones Jr. were terrible. I, I mean, I spit on them both. They, they were terrible. I, it's over for Jim Lampley. This guy was once the best, uh, one of the best uh, blow-by-blow -blow guys uh, in the sport of boxing. He's, claw he's clearly lost it. Uh, even ringside, he's lost the ability to call uh, a fight. He doesn't know. Uh, he's supposed to be calling what's happening in front of him. He waits for the punch stats to come, um, and they weren't even ringside. They were being held in New York. I mean, they had the same view that you and I had from television, and uh, he uh, Lampley wouldn't even commentate on the round, wouldn't give his thoughts until after the punch stats were entered in. Uh, he was downright uh, terrible. And when you add the fact that they kept saying over and over and over that Triple G had kinks in his armor and that other middleweight should be uh, interested in fighting him and stuff, I don't know what the hell fight he was watching. I really don't. I thought that Triple G had a really good performance. I thought he showed virtually no chinks in his armor. And I, I think that he, he dismantled a quality fighter in Martin Murray. Um, I, you know, I, I, really, I, I really don't know what uh, the problem is. The reason why I don't like Roy Jones Jr. is because it's always about Roy Jones Jr. You know, Roy Jones Jr., wh why does he have to always mention his own success, his own accomplishments? I don't want to hear that from an analyst. I want to hear an analytical point of view on a fight. When somebody throws him a question, I want it, a fight perspective. I want the perspective from a former fighter. I don't want to hear about how his achievements were when I won the world title, when I won the world heavyweight title. You know, I don't want to hear that. You know, I want analysts, not self-promoters. Max was solid, but unfortunately, he couldn't carry all the dead weight that was provided to him from Jim Lampley and uh, Roy Jones Jr. Kudos to... Uh, my man, Harold Letterman, did a solid job uh, watching from the studio in New York next to uh, the uh, CompuBox people. I scored a two. When you add it all up, it comes out to 15, which results in...
satisfied. So really, after all of that uh, anal analysis from the uh, TV, uh, boxing on TV ratings, uh, this week, everybody pretty much gets a ranking you can uh, of satisfactory, a rating of satisfactory, I'm sorry. You can uh, check out uh, the uh, updated uh, ratings up on BillyCBoxing.com uh, under TV ratings. Phone line